make sure we're all in here. Okay, so good morning. Uh, it's session 82 of Tool Time Tuesday, if you can believe that. Um, we're almost, we're three and a half years into Tool Time, four years, I can't remember. Uh, time means nothing anymore. <laughs> but today we're gonna talk about Microsoft Planner. We realized we hadn't talked about Microsoft Planner since 2020. Uh, when we were first started using these Office 365 online uh, products. So we wanted to go over it again as a tool that we think is useful um, to everyone. Uh, just to let you know, I'm Larissa Gann from the Research Medical Library and my colleague Leslie Moore is with me. I could not do this without her. So please, you know, shout out to Leslie. Um, if you have questions about how to find resources, the best resource for you, please contact the, the library, we're here for you. Or you can find our website just by Googling or through Inside, and you can email us, chat us, text us. We're, we're here to answer questions and, and help you. Uh, we have some upcoming classes, which you can find on the institutional calendar. You can also find them on our website calendar. Um, we have a class coming up on ORCIDs, creating a unique author ID. So if you're a newer author or you're publishing, an ORCID ID is really important, you probably wanna check that out. We have an EndNote 20 class coming up and we have an advanced PubMed class coming up. So again, I didn't put the dates and times, but these are in the next couple of weeks coming up and you can find them on the institutional calendar for sure. So let's dive right in to Microsoft Planner. This slide is kind of busy. I guess I should have picked a different image, but it's pretty. So what is Microsoft Planner? Uh, it's a task management tool and it uses a Kanban style for organizing things. Um, and we'll look at kind of what that means, but it allows you to create a plan for yourself. It could just be for you, or it could be for your team. You can arrange your tasks visually and you can assign tasks to team members. Um, it's available right now. You can use it if you haven't already. Um, if you go to tasks.office.com, you can also on inside, uh, go to the little waffle in the upper left-hand corner of Inside, and you should be able to find Planner under the apps. Um, so you might ask, is there an app for the desktop? We, uh, we get that question a lot, it, kind of. So similar to when we talked about lists, there's not an official app for Microsoft Planner, but what you can do is you can open Microsoft Planner in Edge, the Edge browser, um, and you can install Planner as an app. There's a little dot, dot, dot in the upper right-hand corner of Edge, and it will allow you to install Planner as what they call an app. But what it really does is pin Planner to your taskbar so you can open it from your desktop quickly and not have to type in the, the URL over and over. Of course, you could bookmark the URL as well, but if you wanna pin it to your uh, taskbar, you can do that. Let me show you that just real quick. Anytime you're in Edge and you're in one of the Office 365 apps, if you go to the dot, 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 uh, it should have an app section where it's going to allow you to install this site as an app. So just to let you know, it only works in Edge. It doesn't work in Chrome because it is a Microsoft product. So the dot, 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 um, and then apps, and you can install it. Or you could just bookmark the link. Uh, if you want to create a plan, again, you go to the task.office.com, and you can just select new plan. It's in the upper left-hand pane. Uh, you're gonna choose a new blank plan or you can choose a, a template. So what's nice about Planner now, as opposed to the beginning of when we started using it is they actually have templates set up that you can select from. So instead of opening a literally blank page to work from, you can get an idea of what other templates look like and how you might arrange or organize things. You're gonna just name your plan or the template, whichever one you select and you can add an existing group to your plan if you want. A group in this case is teams. So if you have a team that you wanna add your plan um, to, or you wanna put that team on your plan, you could go ahead and select it now. If you're not ready to add people to the planner because you're still trying to figure out how you're gonna organize and you know exactly what your goals are, you don't have to do that, you can add people later. You're gonna make your plan public or private. I would suggest private. Typically your plan's gonna be based on a project. You, not, you don't necessarily wanna make it public to just anyone. Um, so you can select private there. So this is what the screenshot looks like when you're creating a blank one. And it's very simple to enter this in and create your plan. 
once your plan is created, um, you are going to create what they call buckets. Uh, buckets are just columns, but in the Kanban style, which is a Japanese style of note-taking organization, they call these buckets. They're just little columns and you can see you name the top of your buckets, whatever you need to name them. Uh, you can drag and drop these to reorder them. So if you decide you want monitoring to go before executing, you can just drag and drop this uh, bucket over to this section. Uh, you can also add new buckets or columns just all the way to the right hand side. There's a section where you can add an additional bucket. So if you need to add another column in, just remember that they call them buckets. Um, so then you're going to add tasks to your buckets. So once you decide what columns you want, um, you're going to go ahead and add tasks to those. So adding a task is quite simple, um, but there's a lot you can do within the task. So don't get overwhelmed by that. The main thing is adding a task is just literally titling it what you what you want the task to be. So you could also click on any existing task. Well, let me go back and show you. Oh, wait, this is perfect. I could click on one of these existing tasks and edit it, add additional information to it, or I can just add a task by clicking on the plus sign here. When I click on um, any of these tasks, it's going to give me a pop-up screen, and it's going to give me lots of different options. I'm going to name the task. I can assign it to someone. Keep in mind that if you're going to assign a task, the person has to already be in the plan for you to assign it. So make sure you've assigned people before you start to your plan before you start assigning tasks. I hope that makes sense. You need people on your plan before you can start making assignments. Otherwise, you're just assigning to, you know, your blank plan. So you can also add labels and we'll look at that. Uh, you can change the progress where it is uh, in the, the progress in the project. You can change the priority. You can add a start date and a due date. Uh, you can make it repeat. So if you need the task to repeat once a week, once a month, you can select that it should repeat. You can add notes. There is a section for checklist items, attachments, and comments. And we're going to go through these and look at them a little more in depth. So someone asked, what's the difference between this and Microsoft To Do? So Microsoft To Do is a literal list, a task list. Uh, you can add people to a task list, but it's a little bit more um, straightforward for like a day-to-day -day task list versus a plan. So a plan would be something like you're planning out an event or you're launching a big project or, you know, and you've got quite a few people attached to it. Um, let's say we're all writing a book together. We might need a plan for how we're gonna progress through each of the sections. Um, a to-do list would be something just for you or for a smaller group um, to work through. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. I love the to-do for myself personally because I'm. it's like having a digital checklist. Um, the planner I really think of is for the larger group when we're working on launching, you know, a new, a new tool, a new resource, a new project, something kind of bigger, and maybe not something that's a, a forever thing. Hopefully there's an end to each project. I, it feels good to have an end to a project. Um, so for your layout in your plan, you have uh, three different options to choose from. So the one we were just looking at was the board option, and that's the Kanban uh, layout with the buckets. Um, it's very visual, it's pretty, it's easy to move things around. You can switch to a grid view if you want, which is more like a list. Um, it includes the same information, but it lays it out in a list like this. They also have a schedule view, uh, which is a calendar. The calendar is going to show you dates that things are due. So if you've assigned due dates, you can look at that calendar and have that, you know, bird's eye view of the calendar, of what's going to be due this month, if that feels more comfortable. Uh, in the planner, you can't add additional views. So Microsoft List allows you to create special views. You can't do that in planner. You just have these three views, but we will talk about how you can lay out, you can filter and group things if you want. You can actually, if you're using um, any of these, either of these layouts, you can group uh, your tasks 
uh, into different into a different order. So the group by bucket is in the upper right hand corner and it gives you some basic grouping options. You can group by who uh, the items are assigned to. So if you're checking in, I'm trying to make sure I know what Leslie has to do this week. Um, you know, I can just group to assign to and see what she has to do. Um, I could group by progress, due date, labels, or priorities. So these are kind of some broad groups you can group to. They also have a filter option. The filter option narrows things down a little bit more than the buckets. So you can filter your plan by the different fields and you can see a screenshot of the options for how you can filter. It's gonna help you narrow down and focus on a smaller group of tasks. So what's due this week? I wanna know what's due this week. Um, I need to know what's the top priority right now. Um, you know, I want to group by a specific label that I've selected. So this helps you filter out uh, especially if your plan gets kind of large, um, if you need to filter down, that's what the filter option is for. Who it's assigned to as well, I could just limit to one person it's assigned to and take a, take a look at those as well. And you'll notice you can clear that if you need to then. So if you've grouped and you've gotten the information you need, you can just clear that and go back to your regular view. You can also assign due dates. So like I said before, but I wanna remind you because we did test this again to make sure we were correct. Before you start assigning tasks, make sure you've added staff members to your plan. If you assign something to someone, um, then it they need to be part of the plan to get the notifications. So you can add people to your group just by going to members and you can add their email addresses in here. Now, remember you could also add in a whole, uh, group, a whole team as well. Um, but I'm just going to add in a couple people because that's who I need on my plan. And once I've added them, I can start assigning things to them. I can uh, uh, add a start date and a due date and assign it to the person. And once assigned, the staff member is going to receive notifications. They're going to receive a notification when the task is assigned to them. They're going to get a notification when it's due and they're gonna get a notification when it's due in the next seven days. So to try to keep them on task a little bit, there will be some automated notifications there. I did not think of this question and we should have. Can you add in folks external to the institution? I am not sure. We will have to test that. Has anyone tried that? And external folks. We'll check it out and we'll let you know. Good question, great question. If anyone's tried it, feel free to chat, but I have not tried adding in an external person, so we'll check it out. We often add our own selves as the external person from our you know, outside email, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, you can also add labels. I personally love color coding things. I don't know if that's a librarian thing or it could be my dyslexia, I love color codes. <laughs> so you can add labels in here to help you group things and help things be, you know, pop a little more for you visually. Um, you add a label when you're assigning your task. Uh, you can click on the little uh, pencil icon and you can change the name of the, the label. The thing to remember is anyone on your team can change your labels. So if you decide blue is a waiting review, and then someone else comes in and doesn't want it to be a waiting review, they want it to be cold, you know, uh, completed, uh, they can change that. So you wanna make sure you're on the same page with what these labels are, or let the group know that only you are changing the labels or only these two people are changing the labels, whatever it is. Okay. All right. So um, the labels are fantastic, again, and we're gonna talk about this at the end as best practice, but when you start in the beginning, you need to set your labels then uh, as soon as possible so that you're not going in afterwards and changing the labels. It's, it's kind of better to, to create um, a structure for your plan early on so you're not changing them halfway through the plan. But do keep in mind, someone else can change that. So if you have a rogue person on your team who loves color coding too, just let everybody know they can't um, not to change the labels without consulting the group. Okay, so someone said in Teams, they were able to add an external member to a plan. So if it's part of a team, 
it seems like you should be able to add an external member. We'll test it too and, and, um, and maybe write up some instructions to share after. Thank you for testing that, Anna. The other thing I like in the planner is the checklist section. Uh, the checklist section, so you've got your, I, I cut it out of the screenshot, but you've got the name of your task at the top. Um, but here's where you could lay out, you know, specific items within that task that you need that person to do or you need to complete the task. So you can add these checklist items and you can even check them off as you go then. So it will show that you've completed those specific tasks. Um, I like this also because you can click show on card. And what that does, let me show you in the planner, is if I have a checklist, it will show here on my um, actual task on the card. So if I had not chosen show on card, it would just show the name of the, the task. But because I have this checklist, it's gonna show me my checklist and what I've done. I could check it off from here or I could open up the task and I could check it off uh, from here. So it will check it off and then my, my checklist is a little shorter. I like the checklist because I can add more context um, to, to what I'm doing. You can also add in notes there. And sometimes I add notes in to just say what we've done so far or, hey, we had a stall in this section because of, you know, we're waiting on this uh, feedback from the vendor, whatever it is. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see. Someone asked, what's the difference between to do and planner? Um, so Leslie responded, planner allows you to track an entire project. Lists is similar, but doesn't have these uh, kind of subtasks that you can add in. Um, to do does have steps or subtasks, but they aren't tied to a plan. So there is crossover between the tools. Um, and Leslie, like Leslie and I always say, don't use a tool just because it's cool or it's new to you or it, you know, it's got cool labels, whatever it is. Use it because it makes sense to the project you're working on or to the task that you're trying to complete. So you don't have to use all the tools we show you. We're really kind of, kind of just trying to create an awareness of them. Some people are probably going to use a Microsoft list to do a complete a project. A planner might make more sense for someone else. It's completely up to you. You can also add attachments to these, which I, I like um, as well. You can add them from your computer, uh, from Teams files, or you can link to a URL. When you go to add attachments, they suggest things that you've used recently. Um, that's pretty typical of Microsoft to try to give you some options to add something you've been working on right then. Uh, but you can also look at any of your other files and attach them there. Uh, you can attach images as well to show them on the card on the actual task. I'm not sure how necessary that is. Maybe if you're doing a visual type project, you can see Leslie and I added some images because they're cute, not because they're useful. Um, but maybe if you were doing something visual um, or you just wanted to add some pop wow to your plan, um, you could add some, some images to it as well. And that's really just as easy as um, adding an attachment here. We did find that it wants a PNG file if you added an um, image. Um, and again, you have to select show on card for it to show. Typically, I'm imagining most people are going to put a Word doc or an Excel or something here, not um, necessarily have to, you know, show a cute bunny. But, you know, sometimes you need a little joy in your life. You need a cute bunny. So, um, so you can add attachments. You can also add comments. And this was uh, new to us. We hadn't done this before. Uh, any plan member can add comments to a task. So this is where you might ask a question or add some additional uh, context. The comments are not super apparent at first. They show up as a tiny little bubble here on the task, and you have to open the task to actually view the comment. Keep in mind that comments cannot be deleted. So don't write anything down that you don't want repeated shouldn't be doing that anyway, but just keep in mind that um, that comment section, it's it stays, I guess, until the plan is deleted, I'm going to guess. Um, we could not find a way to delete the comments. So don't say anything, you know, snarky in the comments. <laughs> um, you can also view the comments in your Outlook group conversations, and I'm going to show you what that looks like as well. 
So if you um, are actively using the comments in your group, in Outlook, you can actually take a look at them as well. So instead of trying to look for that tiny conversation bubble in your Outlook on the left-hand side, there's a group section or you should have a group section. It may say you've not joined any group because you haven't been a part of a, a group plan yet, but you'll see that we have this Tool Time Tuesday plan and there's an item in there because there's a comment. So when you click on the plan and open it up, you can view um, the current comments that are in there. It's just a quick way if you're already in Outlook to take a look and see if anyone has commented. Um, you can also do this in Outlook on, online. Uh, there's uh, also um, on the left-hand bar, look for groups and you can look for this little three-person icon. Also, if you don't see groups, this is your groups icon where you can find uh, uh, comments. I'm not sure how useful the comments are because they were hard to see unless you're looking for them. So notes might be just as effective um, or assigning something to someone or adding something to the checklist, but they're there. And if you as a group agreed to use them, you could, you could use them. I hope eventually they'll make the comments where you actually get a notification when there's a comment. We did look around and that is not possible as of yet. You can also leave a plan. So um, it's okay to say no. Uh, make sure you want to leave the plan because once you leave it, that per the person running the plan is going to have to reassign you to it. But what happens sometimes if you go to planner, you may have random plans in there that someone assigned because they were playing around um, or it was an old project that you don't need anymore. At any point, you can open the plan, go to the dot, 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 and leave the plan. And this might be something you consider for some uh, just clean up. We all need to clean up our files and our, um, you know, systems every once in a while. So you might go to the, the planner section um, when you have time this week and just leave some plans that aren't, aren't for you that you don't need. I also was looking at my OneDrive this week and cleaning out some stuff that I didn't need. Just a thought, fall cleaning instead of spring cleaning. It's not a bad idea to clean up some clutter. So some best practices for you. Um, okay, someone asked a question. So I'm gonna, can you integrate the calendar with calendars and Outlook or iCal? I'm not sure about that. I am not sure. We'd have to look at that too. Integrate the calendar. We'll look at that too. And we'll post to the team. I'll look at it right after though and see if we can figure that out. Good, good question. Um, so here's some best practices we wanted to mention. Don't make too many planners. Uh, just like anything, the, the more um, complicated it is, the harder it may be for someone to find. So having a planner for a team is a good idea if you have projects coming up, but don't make a planner just for the sake of making a planner. Make sure you have a purpose. Don't try to shoehorn yourself into using a tool just because it's fun different. It's cool. Make sure it works for your, your project. So we already mentioned that, but um, I think, you know, we all want to play around with these things and that's totally fine, but make sure you have a purpose for it, um, for using it and that you're going to keep up with it. Add your team members early. So once you've set up your plan, you know, kind of um, your organization, what you're going to do, go ahead and add your team members in because you, they won't receive notifications until they're actually team members on the plan. And let your team know how you want them to interact with the planner. So are you going to follow the comments or not? Um, because if they're commenting and no one's looking, that could get frustrating. Uh, are you going to assign labels? Uh, do you want them to add uh, tasks or notes? How do you want them to handle the plan? How are they going to interact with the plan, basically? All right. Let's see. So we have a couple other questions and we can take a look at some plan things. Uh, can you save it as a template to be used again for a different project? Um, so I don't know if you can create from an existing plan. I have not tried that. You can add your plan to your Outlook calendar. I haven't tried that either. So we'll have to look at that. I'm not sure about that. It seems like you should be able to copy one. If I go to hub, copy plan. 
Yeah. So I should be able to just copy that plan and then rename it and start as something new. So you can, that's awesome. Good, good question. So someone else said I was able to create tasks by planner on my team site and was able to give access to my external user account. Okay. So there are ways to add external users. It looks like if it's in teams, I haven't tried specifically um, from just from planner. Okay. Any other questions or any other things y'all have done with Planner that you thought was helpful, useful? Leslie has construction on her house right now, so she's experiencing jackhammering. It's not fun. Um, I'm going to post this to the teams, the recording and the um, the slides. I will work on some of these questions and adding some additional information there. Um, and please continue, um, you know, asking questions, providing feedback on how you use these things. I just want to reemphasize that we, as a Tool Time Tuesday group, have, you know, affected some change at the institution by communicating with each other about what's going on, you know, with our tools and what's working and what's not. We've been able to make some positive changes based on that. Um, to let IT know and let other people know that things maybe aren't perfect and, and we've made some positive changes. So keep the communication going on the team and we'll keep advocating for you um, as a group. All right.